First order of business would be the minutes from the July 5th meeting. Mail to the magistrates. By any corrections or changes that need to be made. Sam, your second. Second by Bernard Ice. All approved, say aye. Aye. Disapproved. Motion carried for the management. That kept in my way. <laughs> I did it in my mind, they wanted to come out. I'll let you blame her. Next would be your bills list and additional bills list. I say we had to put a new air conditioner somewhere. Civic Center. Civic Center. Actually, it's a, uh, it's a one it's a five ton unit, and there was some other reworking, and we had uh, uh, in Lane's basement. Uh, we were using a just a portable portable job uh, that's a compressor, not compressor, but they get your air through. So we got one that's certified in size for your building down the basement. Is it quieter? I can't say that. No, it's kind of difficult. They've done the whole. Yeah. And reworked some of the wire uh, piping to make it work. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, let's see if there's anything else. Good. Good. I don't see anything else out of the ordinary. Everything else is, you know, monthly bills. Entertain a motion to approve the bills, additional bills, and transfers. Thank you, Jerry. Is there a second? Second. Hey, second. Do you have discussion? What is, what is a water extraction service? Where is that? The uh, clean it's on the clean tech. I mean, they suck up some water somewhere. Oh, uh, yeah. at the state office building. Oh, for when it had no, 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 the, the, the uh, it was just a flash flood we had, um, and the water came in the back underneath the back door or whatever, or okay. the building, and we cleaned the carpets, basically. Okay. Yeah. Well, when it comes in, I'll say that come your office. I'm the water extraction service. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Open the door? We're going to move Brad to higher ground, Jim. We're going to come down here. We're going to move Brad to higher ground. Uh, all approved, say aye. Aye. Disapproved. And motion will carry. Who did for good idea? I think they all come to us. Uh, next on the agenda, I put on the, here the lease for the Bloomfield Station, and uh, in, in your mail, in your mailbox today, I put a copy of uh, well, Matt, some recommendations from Matthew as far as some minor changes to the uh, lease, and actually uh, some of this I may have caused in my communications with uh, their attorney Amanda Rogers. But basically, we're looking at a, uh, a lease where we'll pay five hundred and fifty dollars a month. And that's to the city of Bloomfield. City of Bloomfield. We we'll do a five-year lease. It was uh, just for a period of five years, and it's you got some renewables in it. And then what what Matthew's suggestion is, unless otherwise terminated by the parties, right? Right. And then the renewal in a paragraph five. Paragraph five and two just seem to contradict one another. And, and if you all give me some direction, I'll be happy to talk to Amanda and come back to you. They're small. It's a small issue. Yeah. We can come back with a clean lease for everybody. If you I might to try to get it approved because the council, Bloomfield Council, wants to move on with it with the, with the recommended changes that Matthew. Are they ready to move in? Getting close. It's you know we talked about the gas the other day and some other things. Should be ready. To, you know we were told to be ready before. They could, it should be last week of July. Yeah. We sent notice to our other folks that were the other one wasn't But these are the only two issues you saw. Well, that the, the two and five contradict each other, which you probably would need to do because two calls for an automatic renewal, and then uh, five, five is you got to yeah, give notice. 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 Okay. So I didn't catch that. So they're kind of at odds. I, I'm, I'm just asking for those work it out, Matthew and I work it out. I like the notice better than automatic. Okay. Until the notice, it gives a little more. Uh, well, how about you just strike five? Well, you know, we had a notice on the on the uh, one strike two probably means well, well, the five on the nine one one system. We had notices <laughs> it didn't help situation. Now that you know, if you strike five though, then it becomes automatic. Keith saying he likes the the written notice. You know, just in case something did go red, it would 
be all tonight. But, uh, I, I'm, I'm okay with the book in the court. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with the lease. I think it's a good idea to move them in there, so whatever it takes to get it done. I get a motion to approve the lease with the, the changes, whereas the tenant uh, has to give, we have to give notice. Either uh, way. Item two and five be changed. And be amended. Amended, right. Yeah. Amended. Amended. Motion by Bernard Ice, <coughs> by Jerry Hine. Okay. All approved, say aye. Aye. Uh, disapproved. Motion will carry. Have that, I guess you could move in. <coughs> Please? You didn't have at least proof, and you might still move in. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get it. Yeah, we're not going to have another meeting in until next month. Oh, well. <coughs> okay, on the next item on the agenda, I have not got the paperwork back that I, require, I requested from uh, Jeff McKenzie with the attorneys representing Luxco. Basically, guys, what I understand from this letter is they're at, they're uh, asking for a, uh, a transfer of the state incentives and, uh, with an approval letter from the county judge going to the state. Uh, they they have other corporations or companies. You see what I'm talking about? Right. Yeah. Uh, and they would ask they want us, us to approve the transferring from Lux Coal to a, another subsidiary. How do they need us? Uh, because the county judge is you have the court we approve the initial incentives to go to the state, and we are the conduit of which uh, offers With Lux code we did? I didn't think we did anything with Lux yes. Lux code. Yes. Yes. So I want to bring this back to you. I just want to make you aware of it. I thought I would get the paperwork last week. I didn't get anything from the attorneys, and I will bring it back to you when I get that. Now, I went ahead and put it on the agenda because I thought I might have had it by now. <coughs> Next on the agenda, uh, I'd like to go ahead and advertise for some police cruisers. So we have two in our fiscal court budget, and the sheriff's got a couple in his budget. And uh, he asked me if we could uh, start moving on that as soon as possible. So i uh, entertain a motion to uh, advertise for uh, police cruisers. Uh, four total, two out of his budget, two out of our budget. And he, his, we're going to try to get his delivered in October, November area. Are we looking at the SUVs? The SUVs, the SUVs, yeah. We'll probably have to note that. Um, motion to, if I can get a motion to advertise for two police uh, SUVs by Keith Metcalf, second by Jeff Lear. All approved, say aye. Uh, Disapprove. Motion will carry. I asked Jan to be here today on the planning and zoning amendments. Maybe kind of give us a, a synopsis of what uh, you're asking for here. Um, the first one we've been working with the Regulations Review Committee on, this is dealing with the distilled spirit storage facilities. Uh, as you all remember, back in the spring, the regulations were changed to allow a bourbon warehouse on 100 acres or more in agriculture zone as a permitted use. This is to allow those facilities on tracks that are less than 100 acres but greater than 20, so between 20 and 100 acres, but with a conditional use permit. Uh, the conditional use permit was recommended because uh, when you start getting less than 100 acres, you have more neighbors close by, and so this would allow them to have public notice and come to the hearing uh, and learn about what the project is, what's going on, how it might affect them. So there would be a public hearing notice that immediate adjoining property owners <coughs> would be notified. So it's a conditional use permit. We talked about this a little bit and when we were uh, talking about allowing the 100 acre deal. Remember that? Right. When got, you guys, some of you guys, I do remember talking about it. Whereas, uh, a smaller operation could set up shop and they have to go through the conditional use permit. Here, you're letting just the big boys have, if anybody's got 100 acres, it's pretty salty to just get that done. Here, you could have a little smaller operation set up. And 20 acres goes is consistent with our agricultural division of 20 acres or more. And then we also had an engineer look at it as to what would it take to have two warehouses on a track of land and 20 acres would accommodate the setbacks that we're requiring as well as all the containment facilities and everything the state and local building code would require for a heavy hazardous use. So 20 acres is pretty much a minimum for two warehouses. And the second part of that was just to, uh, to incorporate open space and setback allowances as previously, previously allowed in B5. That's more of a, that was a kind of omit, omitted something. We, when we did, we reformatted the setback used to the setbacks were kind of in a in a paragraph format and it was difficult to read so several years ago we put it in a tabular format 
uh, and some of the language just got omitted. We have somebody that's interested in B5 zoning, and when we sat down with them, uh, going through the setbox, I knew that it was the setbox were from the outer boundaries, but it wasn't written in the ordinance. So we, when we went back to the old ordinance, it was there, and you have a copy of the old ordinance. We just need to put that language back in to the regulations. So can this be put on any 20 acres anywhere in the county? If they apply for the conditional use permit and went in front of the Board of Adjustments. Uh, it, so, but it still has to be A1? It still has to be A1. It still has to be A. So they have to have a hearing on it? Yes. And like the permitted use doesn't have to. Have 100 a acres or more, you don't have to have a hearing. 100 acres or less, you have a public hearing on it. The way you let the public be involved. And I can see the 100 acres because that limits the areas around here where these are, this 20 acres is going to make it where it can get real cluttered after a while. Real cluttered. Who? Let me just say this. Let me just say this. Uh, is the law of physics is not going to allow it to get cluttered because you know what one of the grounds is cost? I don't understand that. Yeah, but you don't want it right beside the subdivision either. You don't uh, want it right beside the subdivision either. That's what the, the, the public hearing would be for. I know, but. Yeah. If we allow it, then it's pretty much allowed. The city right? passed it, I think, didn't they? Uh, the city has passed it on first reading. There's not much ag zoning in the city. They were that they put one on it either. Few spots. Like I, I, I don't like it. <clears throat> I do. But we talked about like we talked about it in our thing. We're trying to let the smaller uh, brewery type of uh, we call craft distilleries. But it's it's saying saying here, it would be okay maybe if you limited it to a like a five thousand square foot warehouse instead of a 40,000. That's almost an acre of ground on the roof. Yeah. With, uh, so two acres of it's going to be on the roof and, and the back of the subdivision setting. I can just see one, if I did one in my place on Green Lane, I'd probably get burned out from all my neighbors. Now do you have 20 acres in your Sure. And you don't have to take a track and yes. you have the ground. But I'm, I'm surrounded on three sides by neighbors. Well, then you probably wouldn't get approved. Not if you have 100 people come it's up here. It's a I know you, you'd have to go through the hearing process. Yeah. I, I'm just saying if we if we eliminate that now, we don't have to fight that fight for planning zone or anybody else down the road if we stay with our 100 acre limit. I understand. I understand. Has somebody requested this, Tim? Uh, it was recommended for the regulations review committee to look at it. And they made we talked about probably we, we don't have a particular project, particular project man. We didn't talk about it and well, have a particular so project. you're just trying to bring this up before it happens right well uh, the, um, the the folks have gone out to the uh, we call it the old hill billy heaven spot how many acres yeah it's hellas it's got about how many acres in that track uh, 50. 40 40 maybe total. Did he get the rest of it? I'm not sure if he got all of it. I thought he just got seven. He's eight completely eight. surrounded by yeah. the land that Hayden still owns. Yes. Yeah. But he's going to be limited to 15,000. Well, let's let these guys digest this for today since the first discussion. Anybody else have any comments want to make on it? No, I'm just a little hesitant like saying if we start letting them pop up everywhere. I don't know. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know. I mean, as long as this whiskey boom is going, it's a great thing. but. Uh, if we if we start allowing them to, to scatter throughout the entire county, I'm not sure I like that at all. Uh, again, I think the fact that the investment today is pretty strong, and if somebody builds something again, um, they're going to try to make it work. They got they're going to have some cash. You're not going to have them leave, go out there and try to build a whiskey warehouse. Not too. Many. You got to fill it up. Yeah. Anyway, think about it. And also, just to let you all know, for um, uh, Northeast Nelson County Magistrates, the Planning Commission is taking a bus tour uh, next Wednesday. Uh, we'll be going out to Chaplin, Bloomfield, uh, Fairfield, and then coming back through uh, Cox's Creek. So we'll be out. This is kind of getting them out looking at areas of the county uh, before they start making some changes to the comprehensive plan map. So we did that several years ago uh, in Boston. We took them to Boston, New Haven, and New Hope. Uh, area and then came back around through Woodlawn Springs. So it's next Wednesday. We'll be over in that part of the county uh, in a bus. So hopefully we'll get them out and looking. We'll probably be going to some of Sam's district as well because we'll go down to Parkway and Philiatric Lane and let them see some of the changes out there. So thank you. Thank you, Jane.